I'm hunting for Schmetterling. That's why I brought the Schmetterling Tasha today because I've, it, it attracts them and I've seen like two and spooked it. And I need to get a picture of Schmetterling. Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here, and look at this. I finally have my hands on a Canon RF 100mm f2.8 macro. And this is unique because this is really the first dedicated mirrorless macro lens that we've had a chance to review, and it has been a long time coming. You see, ever since this lens was announced, although Canon was able to get some early copies out to their ambassadors, it was hard to find a review copy to play with. Finally, thanks to the camera steering in Calgary, we've got a demo lens that we can play with, and I'm eager to take some macro shots and see how it goes. So there's always this concept that mirrorless lenses are going to be more compact, lighter weight than their SLR counterparts, and that's normally true, but with the RF 100mm macro here, even though it's purpose-built for mirrorless, it basically feels very similar in size and weight to like a Canon EF 100mm macro, around 650 grams, 67mm filter thread. Of course, this is an L-series lens though, so it's ruggedly built and fully sealed. Okay, now as far as external controls go, I do like that we have a customizable control ring here at the front of the lens, that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got our standard focus limiters, we do have autofocus, manual focus switch, and image stabilizer on off, because this is an image stabilized macro. So let's talk about one of the main key features on the Canon RF 100mm macro, and that's the spherical aberration control. First thing I'm gonna say, just from an ergonomic standpoint, the ring is very smooth, very easy to turn though. The actual neutral setting is quite subtle, so I highly recommend using the lock switch, just if you wanna keep it in neutral for regular photography. So as you push the spherical aberration control into the minus area, you're gonna get a very dreamlike effect. Now it's important to understand that your main subject that's in focus is still gonna be very soft focus, dreamy and hazy. It's actually quite beautiful. Bokeh in the background will also get significantly softer looking and so it just gives you this kind of dreamscape kind of look. Now when you push spherical aberration to the plus side, keep in mind that your subject, although a little bit more contrasty, is still gonna be largely soft focus. The background bokeh, however, is gonna become very dramatic, very pronounced, very harsh, and it can also be a really interesting look. I'm having a lot of fun with it here just shooting stream side. Okay, so we have a 100 millimeter macro lens, which is basically the same size as its SLR counterpart. Is there any advantage beyond, you know, the spherical aberration control for using this over, say, a 100 millimeter EF macro with an adapter ring? Well, there definitely is, because this goes to a 1.4 times macro reproduction rate, whereas Basically all other 100mm macros generally do one to one. This gives you more magnification, gets you that little bit closer. All right, let's talk about autofocus on the RF 100mm macro here. Now, first off, it's actually quite smooth and quite speedy. Even going from macro to infinity, it's pretty good. Now, of course, autofocus is something I would absolutely rely on if I was shooting portraits, for example, with this lens. Using eye detect, relying on continuous autofocus, I think that does a great job. But this is a macro lens, and of course, for macro work, I'm gonna be relying on manual focus more than anything else. Now, the manual focus ring is pretty well dampened, and Canon by far has the best manual focusing assist tools I've ever seen. I mean, I can punch in like any other camera, magnify and focus by that, but even when I'm just in the regular unmagnified view, I get that rangefinder icon, the three triangles, and I can just put my autofocusing point where I wanna confirm focus, manually focus there, and when everything goes green, I'm good. I also love that on the display, it shows me my distance scale and my macro life size reproduction. So overall, it's just beautiful to work with in manual focus. All right, let's talk about flare today. We've got a nice sunny day. Clearly, I'm not even using the hood. And actually, even still, flare is very well controlled. I mean, very little loss of contrast. I'm not really seeing any ghosting as well. So this lens can handle shooting in the sun quite easily. Now, loca as well, longitudinal chromatic aberration. That's another thing we talk about. This is where in-focus and out-of-focus areas pick up a color cast, and it's very hard to get rid of in post. You can see a little bit of it here, a little bit of green in the background, a little bit of magenta in the foreground, pretty typical, but nothing major, so should be easy to deal with in most situations. So let's talk about the bokeh of the RF 100mm macro lens. 
Honestly, it's some of the nicest that I've seen on a lens in quite a long time. Beyond the spherical aberration control, what that lets you do creatively. Just in the neutral settings, I would say at f2.8, there's a bit of cat's eye for sure, but otherwise the bokeh is very clean, no onion rings, very smooth looking. I like the way that it transitions from in focus to out of focus areas, maybe slightly energetic, but it's very smooth. Now when you stop down, you'll notice that it still has a very nice round look to the bouquet. And so overall, I think this would be an awesome shallow depth of field lens for portrait work, obviously for macro work as well. And it just has a buttery smooth appearance to it. Now macro lenses can always be fun for video applications and certainly this would be great for those close up extremes but like L macro lenses this does have quite a bit of focus breathing so I wouldn't really use it for focus pulls, it moves too much. Plus the fact that the macro lens as you get closer focusing you lose quite a bit of exposure and you're going to see that shift in video as well. But we thought okay spherical aberration control this will be cool for video and certainly if you're doing one still shot and you want to get that more dreamlike effect or that harsher bokeh in the background it works the same as it would for photography, it's great. But we thought, wouldn't it be cool to go neutral and then in the same shot transition to, say, the dreamlike sphere collaboration control? Unfortunately, the lens shifts its focus breathing quite a bit when you do that. It's just too distracting. We thought it'd be cool. Not really. Okay, so we've had some fun out here looking for macro stuff, but I'm not getting all the samples I want, so I gotta do some more shots. As well, you know, 100 millimeter macros have always been a great lens, pulling double duty as both macro work and also a portrait lens. So, especially with the sphere collaboration control, I wanna do some more portraits, but Jordan doesn't want his picture taken today very much. So, we're gonna do those as well, and when we see you again, we'll have more information on this lens. And we're back. We've uh, taken some more shots. We've had a look through them, and I think we can finalize our thoughts now on the RF 100 millimeter macro. Now, in terms of sharpness, very impressive. I mean, this lens, even wide open at 2.8, is very sharp in the center, as you can see here. Uh, you know, if we stop down to 5.6, you really don't notice much improvement. Going to the corners, again, a little bit of corner softness at 2.8 is pretty typical. It's still very usable. And then again, for macro, not always that big deal anyways. And then certainly if you stop down, those corners sharp up nicely. Overall, this lens is just optically a really good performer. I want to address the focus shift issue that a lot of people are talking about with the Canon RF 100 millimeter macro. See, Canon cameras autofocus these lenses wide open, in this case at f2.8, but if you've chosen an aperture like f5.6 or f8 to get some more depth of field, when you actually go to take the picture, the aperture stops down, and what can happen is that your plane of focus can actually shift. This is a non-issue for medium to long distance shooting portrait stuff like that. It doesn't really affect it. So I have to say, with all the shots we were taking, the testing we were doing with the RF 100 millimeter macro, I personally didn't find focus shift to be an issue on our particular copy of this lens. I mean, you know, the focus point does shift a slight amount, but it was so minor that I really didn't find it to be an issue. I think maybe if you're a really discerning macro photographer that was pushing beyond the 1.4 times magnification ratio, maybe using extension tubes and stuff, and you need hyper critical focusing, then it might be something you need to compensate for. But for most users of this lens, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. And again, your mileage will vary. So is this lens worth buying? You know, is this new mirrorless design revolutionary? And is it gonna be right for you? It's a tough one. It really does depend on the criteria that you're looking for. I mean, you know, doing some portraits now, shooting the SA, sphere collaboration, minus and plus. First off, I would say, um, it can be fun at times. I wouldn't go anywhere even close to half power though. It's just too soft focus and effect and it's pretty jarring. You know, there might be some situations where a macro, you might want the bokeh in the background to be a bit livelier or for portraits, you might want that kind of vintage 80s portrait kind of look. But I imagine those situations are pretty few and far between. And so for a lot of people, this is gonna be a fun thing or largely a gimmick. I think though as a portrait lens, this is an awesome lens, absolutely. And the fact that it autofocuses so well, if you're a wedding photographer, this might be a really fun thing. You can dabble with that 80s wedding style stuff, but you can also go from ring shots and details to, you know, to portraits and it does a really good job. If I was a serious macro photographer and I didn't care then about the spherical aberration control or even autofocus for that matter, that's tough. I mean, the EF 100 mm macro, it's optically still a great lens. Or maybe you look at getting yourself a manually focusing, fully mechanical macro lens like the Lawa, which gives you that two to one macro reproduction for dedicated close up work. I mean, here's the thing. If you're a macro photographer, would this lens be a good option for you? Absolutely. I think you can compensate for the focus shift issues, but you're gonna be paying a lot of money for things that you might never care about, like fast autofocus and the spherical aberration control. I really think the people who are gonna get the most out of this lens are people looking to do both close up and portraits and have that versatility in one lens. 
Well, thanks for watching. Do check out deepreview.com. You can see our sample gallery there. Otherwise, please do leave your comments below what you think about this lens. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.